Hi guys, are you looking to install and connect high power PoE network devices at a distance of up to 1000 feet? Now a long range PoE switch with the high power output might just be what you need. Today in this video, I'm going to use a long range PoE switch to power up a PTZ camera and a wireless access point. And if you have any trouble with your system design, please feel free to contact us through the link down in the description box below and we'll be more than happy to solve your problem for you. Now a high power PoE is a technology that allows both power and data transmitted over a single ethernet cable. It can deliver higher level of the power than the standard PoE because they are AF, AT and BT standard. So BT standard is the highest standard. It can deliver up to 90 watts of PoE and it's used to power high demand devices such as the SS point and also security cameras that require more power than the standard PoE can provide. So without saying, let's move on to the demonstration board and check out our setup today. So now we are in front of the board. Today we are going to connect the wireless access point and a PDZ camera. Now a PDZ camera stands for pan, tilt and zoom. It can provide high resolution video footage and this is also PoE enabled. It can offer remote control of the camera's viewing angle and zoom capability, allow for easy monitoring of the large area. Now since we are using the high power camera, so the distance becomes the biggest challenge here. Now I have a 300 meter ethernet cable that's about 1000 feet in between, but we know the PoE has a limitation of 328 feet, that's about 100 meter. And why is that? Because as the length of the ethernet cable increases, the resistance of the cable increases as well and leading to voltage drop and power loss over the cable. A high power devices may require more power than can be reliably transmitted over a longer distance and resulting in additional power loss. So what can we do? That's why we need to add a long range PoE switch. Now, this is a device that combines the functionality of a traditional PoE switch with the ability to transmit both power and data through a single ethernet cable for extended distance. Now, it can provide up to 500 meter distance maximum and also fast networking. The, re the connected PD here can receive up to 100 megabit per second and this is compatible with IEEE 802.3 AF, AT and BT standard. And you see I have four, I mean eight ports in total here but keep in mind only four ports, the first four are the long range PoE port and the other four port are just ordinary PoE port and for each port it can supply up to 30 watts of power maximum. So that's why we need to add this in order to boost up the power and data. And you might think, is that all we need? But if you look carefully, you will see we have an extender here by the devices. How come? Why do we still need to add a PoE extender? Remember, this is the PoE long range switch that can provide the power and data up to 500 meter, right? However, our edge devices here are just ordinary devices. They don't have the special chipset to send the power and data back to the main switch. That's why we need to add a PoE extender in order for the device here to send back the data because they have to do the exchange, right? You have to send power and data and then the edge device will have to send the data back to the switch so we can have image. And without saying, now let's do the connection together. So now I have a monitor here and an NVR. The image will show up later on after we connect it with the PDZ camera. And this is the router to provide the main network and the long range PoE switch. So I'm going to use a short patch cord here to connect our network router 
to the NVR. And then using another short patch cord to connect our main network with the long range PoE switch in order to provide data. And remember, our long range PoE switch can get enough power to supply for the edge devices. And it can supply long range because it used up all four pairs of the twisted wire in an ethernet cable rather than just two pair. For other standard, they are just using two pairs to exchange the power and data. And now this is using four pairs. That's why it can provide enough power and data up to 500 meter. And since we have two devices, so I'm going to go ahead and connect with two PoE port here. Remember I said only one to four port are the long range port. So make sure you plug it into four number one to four. Okay. And we have two pile Ethernet cable here and for each pile is 300 meter. That's about 1000 feet. And here we come to the edge. The PoE device extender here will help our edge device to boost the data back to our main switch. And make sure you plug it in the right port. This is the input port A. We are going to connect with the Ethernet cable. And using the output port here to connect with the edge device. So here's one. And our wireless SS point here is also PoE enabled. I already plugged it in. And now I'm going to use another short patch cord to connect our PDZ camera to the PoE extender. And using another Ethernet cable to connect with our extender in order to provide both power and data to our edge device and now they're also able to send back the data and you can see the power is up it has lights on and it's moving and the PDC camera here is also alive so our whole setup is done and there's no extra external power source needed at the edge here are a few more tips for you. If you're doing a PoE connection, make sure you choose a pure copper cable like the Cat5e or Cat6 because copper has superior conductivity compared to other materials, so it can provide stable power delivery. And also, you have to be careful with your power budget. Our long-range PoE switch here has total 120 watts power budget. So if all your edge device since here are adding up over 120 watts, that means some of the device might not get enough power. And also, this PoE extender here is IP67 waterproof, so you can put it outdoor by your edge device. You can put it as close as you can with the edge devices. So in between, you will just need an Ethernet cable. And if you want to install IP devices that in an even longer distance, I strongly recommend you to use the fiber optic cable. And here's the video on how to use a fiber optic cable to install with multiple IP devices. And thank you so much for watching us today and I will see you next time.